Hi, this is CAD CAM Lessons channel. In this video, I will show you how to create such a part in FreeCAD. FreeCAD is a fully free 3D CAD system that can be used both for hobby and commercial purposes. If you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any new content. And if you'd like to support my work and treat me to a virtual coffee, you can find all the details in the description below. Thank you for your support. And before we go any further, the videos where I show FreeCAD through examples may not cover all of FreeCAD's features in detail, so if you are just starting to learn FreeCAD, I have created a playlist of videos that are a good place to start. The link to the playlist is in the description below the video. Start a new project as a parametric part. Here we'll begin by creating a sketch. Select Create Sketch and choose the XY plane as the sketch plane. We will start by drawing a few circles. Select the Circle Drawing command and draw two circles whose centers will be placed at the origin of the coordinate system. The first circle has a diameter of 30 millimeters. And the second circle has a diameter of 50 millimeters. OK, now we will draw two circles on each side of the y-axis, whose centers will lie on the x-axis. Click on the x-axis when it's highlighted. Here, for the diameter of the circle, enter 15 millimeters. OK, for the diameter of the second circle centered at this point, enter 30 millimeters. Next, we will draw such circles on the other side of the y-axis. Click here, and the diameter of the first circle is 15 millimeters. Hit Enter. The diameter of the second circle is 30 millimeters. Now, right-click to finish this command. I would like these circles to be symmetric to these circles relative to the y-axis. To do this, we select this point, select this point, and select the y-axis. Choose the symmetry constraint. And now, if I change the position of these circles, or the position of these circles, the position of the second pair of circles will adjust to maintain symmetry relative to the y-axis. Next, select the line drawing tool and draw four lines roughly like this. OK. Right-click to cancel the line drawing command. Now we will apply a tangency constraint between the lines and the circles. Select a point, select a circle, and choose the tangency constraint. We can activate this constraint by pressing the T key on the keyboard or clicking this icon. We do this with the other points. I select a point, select a circle, and press the T key. We do this with the next geometries. Okay, we have something like this. Now we select this point, select this point, and press the D key to activate dimensioning. For the distance between the centers of these circles, enter 120 millimeters. Then we select the geometry trimming command and trim the segments of the circles. I right click to cancel the trimming command. Here we are missing some constraint. By gently grabbing the geometry, you can see where this constraint is missing. Here we are missing some constraint, so let's try to do it this way. I select this point, select this point, and choose the horizontal vertical constraint to determine that these points lie in one horizontal line. OK. We have such a sketch. We close this sketch, and based on this sketch, we will add a pad operation. 
we select the pad operation and create a solid with a height of 10 millimeters. Here we set the length of the pad, which is the height of the solid. By default, we have the value of 10 here, and that's the value I would like to set for the pad. So I click OK, and we have something like this. Now we will create another part of the solid. We will create another sketch and use this face as the sketch plane. Select this face and choose the Create Sketch command. Here we will start by creating Reference Geometry. Select the Create External Geometry command. And select this edge of the model and this edge of the model as the reference geometry. If you want to learn more about Create External Geometry, I've included a link to a video in the description where I explain how this command works. Next we will create two circles. Select the circle drawing command and draw a circle whose center will lie at this point. So when this point is highlighted, click here with the left mouse button. For the diameter of the circle at this moment, we will not enter anything, just hover over this point, and when this point is highlighted, click the left mouse button. Here, an automatic constraint has been applied which linked the circle to this point. For this circle, if we create a second circle here, we place the center of this circle here. If I hover over this line, we have a snap for this geometry. If I click here with the left mouse button, the automatic constraint in this case has not been applied, so in such cases, we need to add the constraint manually. To do this, I right click, change the diameter of this circle, so that I can freely select this circle and this geometry. I select this circle, select this reference geometry, and choose the equality constraint which we can activate by pressing the E key on the keyboard. OK, we have something like this. We close the sketch, and based on this sketch we will add a pad operation, that is, we will create another part of the solid, we select the pad operation and add a pad of 40 millimeters here. Click OK to accept it, and in this way we have created such a solid. To create this solid, we used one of the most basic operations for creating 3D solids in 3D CAD systems, which is creating a solid by extruding a sketch. The second basic operation for creating 3D solids in 3D CAD systems is the operation that allows for removing material based on a sketch. This is the pocket operation, and now we will prepare a sketch for this operation. We create another sketch, Select this face and choose Create Sketch. Here, select the Create External Geometry command to create reference geometry for these edges of the solid. We select the edges of these two holes. Now we will select the Circle Drawing tool and draw a circle whose center will lie at this point and draw a circle with a diameter of 20 millimeters. Here, in this case, an automatic equality constraint has somehow been applied. I don't know why this happened. I will try to create a second circle from this side. I'm curious why this constraint was applied. Here I also entered a diameter of 20 millimeters. And instead of creating a circle with a diameter of 20 millimeters, an equality constraint was applied. I will try to do it in such a way that I create this circle much larger here, and now I enter the diameter. OK, the equality constraint has been automatically applied here. I don't know why this happened, so I will right click, select this circle, and press the delete key to remove this circle. Here there were two circles, so I select this circle again, and press the delete key once more, to revert to this geometry. I will also delete this circle. OK, we will approach this differently. We will simply draw two circles whose centers will be located at these points with any diameters. OK, I right click to cancel this command. Now we select this circle, press the D key to activate dimensioning. Now for the diameter, I enter 20 millimeters. I press enter and do the same from the other side. We can also apply an equality constraint here or we can simply specify the diameter of this circle. I right click to cancel dimensioning. 
I don't know why the diameter input didn't work while drawing the geometry, but an equality constraint was automatically applied. At this point, it's not important enough to think about it. It is possible that this is a bug in FreeCAD, which occurs in specific situations, and appears so rarely that it doesn't make sense to think about it. This is simple geometry, and we manage to draw it easily. Therefore, I will close the sketch and we will remove material from the solid based on this sketch. We select the pocket operation, and here we specify the depth of the pocket. In this case, we will create a pocket with a depth of 5 mm. But if you would like to change the value of the pocket depth, you can do so in this field. Here we enter the value 5, click OK, and we have something like this. Now I will create another sketch and add another pocket. We will create a sketch on this face. Select this face, choose Create Sketch. Here, let's start by drawing a rectangle. Select the Centered Rectangle command and draw a rectangle so that the center of this rectangle lies on the Y axis. For the width of the rectangle, enter 10 millimeters. Press Enter and for the second dimension of the rectangle, enter 15 millimeters and press Enter. OK, we have such a rectangle. Right click to cancel that. We will soon change this dimension. Now we need to constrain the center of this rectangle with the edge of this solid. And for this, we need reference geometry, external geometry. Select the Create External Geometry command and as reference geometry, select this edge. Right click to cancel this command. Now select the center of the rectangle, select this geometry, and choose the coincidence constraint. This constraint will place the center of the rectangle on this geometry. Here we will change this dimension, and to edit the sketch dimensions, double click the left mouse button on the dimension you want to edit, and enter a new value. Here enter 10 millimeters. OK, we close the sketch and based on this sketch we will add a pocket through the entire solid. To do this we select the pocket operation. Here we can specify the depth of this pocket. We can enter a specific value. We can set a value greater than the height of the solid. But we can also do it this way by using the operation type. Here, as an operation type, select through all. In this way, the pocket will be created through the entire solid, regardless of how high the solid will be. Click OK. And now, if I change the length of this pad, we can change this value to 50 millimeters. As for the values in these fields, we can change these values by also scrolling the mouse wheel. I change the value, click OK, the changes have been applied to the model, the solid was enlarged and as you can see the pocket is also made through the entire solid because we simply used the type of pocket and not a specific value. Let's also pay attention to one more thing. This line and this line result from the way geometry is displayed in FreeCAD. By default this line should not be displayed but if this line is displayed some FreeCAD users may think that the parts we create are separate models. This is one single model, this part is connected. This line simply results from the way geometry is displayed in FreeCAD. To turn off the visibility of this line, we select the last operation in the operations tree and change the value of the refine parameter from false to true. Click in the working area and now this line is invisible and the part looks like this. This will no longer cause confusion. And if you have this line displayed but would like to enable options that ensure that this line does not display by default, then we go to Program Preferences. From the Edit menu, we select Preferences. And here we select Part Part Design. We check those two options. You can check all the options here. Click OK. And now these lines should not be displayed. I would like to show you two more basic operations related to creating 3D solids in FreeCAD. These are the fillet and chamfer operations, which are responsible for rounding and chamfering edges. If you would like to round or chamfer an edge, just select one edge or several edges for chamfering or rounding. 
To select multiple edges, do so while holding down the control key. We select the operation we want to use. Here we add a fillet and specify the fillet value. Click OK. In a similar way, we can add a chamfer operation, but we can also add these operations to all edges of the selected face. If I select this face and choose the chamfer operation, the chamfer will be applied to all edges of the selected face. Here we specify the dimension of the chamfer and click OK. In this way, with these few simple steps, we created such a solid. Of course, the goal of this lesson was not just to create this solid, but through this simple example, I wanted to show you the basic operations related to creating three-dimensional solids in FreeCAD. We will finish here. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to this channel.